What I'd like to show now is the difference between using a standard black and white brush alpha and one that has been blurred around the edges in an image editing application like Photoshop. I'll select this one and as I hover over the object and I'll scale my brush up, you can see from the low resolution preview that it's rather coarse. So I'll click, I'll turn wireframe off and now I'll select the one that has been blurred around the edges. When I click, you'll notice a very drastic difference. How would you go about blurring a brush alpha in Photoshop? The first thing you might do is create an action inside of Photoshop where you use Gaussian blur on a brush alpha, then apply that using a batch utility to the entire folder for which you have stored brush alphas if they're not already blurred a lot of hard surface brush alpha packs that you may have downloaded off the internet many of them are intended for use with other sculpting applications and you may find that they too oftentimes are blurred as well so this is not exclusive to 3d coat All right now here in 3d coat though if i wanted to blur this one i could right click and choose edit in external editor it's going to open up whatever image editor you have assigned from the edit menu the preferences panel under the general tab the top section at the very bottom here if you click on that and point it to whichever image editor that you use 3d coat will utilize that let's click cancel and i recently downloaded a hard surface brush alpha pack for ZBrush and you can see many of these do indeed have blurring already applied. Let me right click and choose edit in external editor. Now you may be asking well this appears to be fairly sharp why is it jagged inside 3D coat? As I increase the size you can see what's going on here. I'll move about. You can see all the stair stepping here. Blurring allows the application to interpolate the extrusion whereas a sharp high contrast edge gives the application no leeway. It gives it no room to interpolate between the vertices. So what I might do is control click the one that has this transparency and that's going to select the shape. We can go to select modify border and then choose our border width so I'll choose something like 20 and now go to filter blur Gaussian blur and we can adjust it as we need I hit OK and now with that still selected I'll select the height map as well filter Gaussian blur Control D to deselect just like in 3D coat when you're working with freeze mask or selection mask. Now you would just save it to the same directory that we have our brush pack in. Now let's step on over into the E panel and choose load shape. This is a very different approach in that 3D coat will create a shape from either a vector file or from a black and white image. So it's going to create a spline wherever you have high contrast between black and white. So I'll choose something like this. And you'll probably see something more like that in your viewport. And also the value will be set at 1. So you would just choose import curve to viewport. You could flip it along a given axis. Again, scale it as you need here. Rotate it and then hit OK. Now you have a transform gizmo to which you can further manipulate it if you need. So you have rotation handles. You can scale here in the center. The circle in the middle of the gizmo, you can click, hold, and drag to move it. You can scale along an individual axis if you need. And you can also save and load the shape for later usage if you like. You can also choose to edit points if you want to add some points or modify the shape somehow. Let's scale it down. And I'll hit the Enter key. Or you could just hit Apply. 
One thing that is going to determine just how much anti-aliasing or blurring around the spline is the border width. If I bring this to zero and move this gizmo and hit enter, now I have no blurring whatsoever. Okay, um, it's probably best that I go into an orthographic view. And let's bring this up to about 20 or so. I'll hit enter one more time. That's too much blurring. So let's try about five. See if that's the sweet spot. Seems to be about right. Maybe a little less, but this gives you the option to adjust the blurring as you work. I'll hit escape. Another option is to use the move tool and when you hold the control key, it's going to either push in or push out along the normals of the vertices beneath your brush. So as I hold down the control key, you can see that red profile on your brush turn blue. And now I can adjust the amount of extrusion on the fly. And this is a really powerful little feature that not a lot of people are aware of. This is great whenever you're applying scales on a reptile, for example. You can go along and adjust the size and then extrude it out at varying amounts as you go. Perhaps the best way to perform an extruded shape is to either utilize kit bashing models from your models palette or primitives and do so in a boolean operation. So I'm going to use the click to place quick alignment feature here. It gives you some additional options once you click that to scale to your brush radius and use the stroke direction. So I'll click here and I want to change it to subtract and hit apply. Okay, let me scale this one in just a bit. And maybe I want to create that on its own separate layer. I'll change my Boolean operation to add. And I want to uncheck click to place because if I move my cursor around and click anywhere on the surface, it's going to relocate this. I don't want that. So let's hit apply. And I'm going to step out of the tool so that I can see the result. Okay. So this is always the best option if you already have the object in your model's palette or in the primitives tool. Give that a try first and then you can utilize these other techniques secondarily. One reason why it's a, a better approach is that if you're in surface mode, 3D Coat applies along the edge a certain measure of localized subdivision so that you get incredibly crisp edges. And as you work, I typically will store in a project folder or maybe a categorized folder individual objects. And so that way you have a large kit batching library to draw from. Before I finish, I want to show one last feature in 3D Coat that you may find to be extremely helpful whenever you're trying to place your individual shapes. Let's try extrude. And we can set our depth limit. Now I'm going to choose the movable stamp draw mode. It allows a user to move the brush stroke about the model interactively, as you can see. And one other nice thing about it is as I'm clicking to move, I can use the bracket keys to increase the brush size on the fly. And I can rotate with the 9 and the 0 key as I'm moving. So this is incredibly helpful. Now to keep from having to hold down the control key, you can check invert tool. That way you can keep your fingers on the bracket keys or the 9 and the 0 key just above that. Okay. So again, yeah, I can increase or decrease. 
and rotate. Voila. Okay, so I hope you found these tips helpful. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.